I was in elementary and primary school, my experience learning English and mother tongue gave me tremendous imagination and curiosity. A few years later when I was in the university, that curiosity and imagination evolved into something that constitutes my talk today, the Nilerian script. A script that I created, write, and develop indigenous languages in South Sudan, Sudan, the Nile Valley region, Africa, and beyond. To go back to my time in elementary school, when they taught me English alphabet, I tried to make sense of the latest by relating them to anything that I had seen in my local environment. And it was not easy to connect the dots. So I start to cram them, memorize them, like any of you. I guess that's all what we did. So after successful memorizing the latest, it was time to start to read and to write. And the first teacher to make sense to me was my mother tongue teacher. Because he taught me to pronounce word letter by letter, slowly and then quickly. So I would start to pronounce like the word B-O-L. I would say B-O-L, B-O-L, B-O-L. And then it started to make sense to me, and I was excited. I tried with a few more words like ding, ding, and then I start to read, and I was excited. I thought I could apply the same thing in English because I knew English alphabet, but when I tried, I was disappointed it didn't work. C-O-W, to me it was cho wa cho <laughs> That is not correct. My teacher for English said it's cow. And I was like, that is K-A-W. He said it is English. This is how it is. A few more examples. Bird double O-K, I said book. And the teacher said book. And I gave up. So the only way for me was to hear somebody pronounce an English word and then I could pronounce it correctly. My knowledge of English alphabet was not sufficient for me to pronounce English words. And that was the first time I was curious why English was the way it is. Later on, when I was close to ending my primary school, I went to Maridi, a town in south, western South Sudan, and I started to learn about European explorers and missionaries activities in East Africa at the time. And these are people who came all the way from Europe. They didn't know any African language. And the Africans at that time did not know any of European languages. But these people managed to learn the languages and even to establish alphabet for some of the languages that are written today. So I was impressed by their work. And I tried to look at it. And I saw something. And it was the fact that certain letters were two letters, three letters, and they are pronounced as one sound. It's because some of those sounds in our languages are not in English. So I thought to myself, maybe we couldn't have something like this. Maybe a single letter would be good. Or they could have created an entirely new writing system. But as a kid, I said, maybe it cannot be done. And at that time, I said, all right, forget it. Went to high school in Uganda. And by 2010, when I went to University of Bar Ghazal in Khartoum, I started to learn Arabic. And when I learned Arabic, I started experimenting the same problems again. And that time I said, well, maybe I have to create the script that I dreamt of when I was in primary school. And this was the time I started to create an Alien script. Then in 2012, I was confident it was something that can be useful to write our languages. And then I started to read about different writing systems. And I learned, actually, the ancient Egyptians were the first to develop writing systems. And the first of these, I don't know how many of you have ever heard of hieroglyphs, Egyptian hieroglyphs. This is how it looks like. They develop it from objects and animals in their environment, just like I was doing. And I was amazed. And then from these, there was also a meritic writing system, which was in ancient Sudan, in my own country. I didn't even know. So I was glad that my childhood dream made me to know a lot of things that I didn't know. And I started to learn about different cultures, about different languages. And I learned the Greek, developed their alphabet, 
from Phoenician alphabet, which is an alphabet which was used in Middle East. The Greek did this because Phoenician alphabet was not sufficient to write Greek language. And I felt this was actually a justification for my creation because there are so many sounds that are not represented by English alphabet. So at this point, someone would wonder, why is this script actually good for underdeveloped indigenous languages? And I say, it is to ensure that what is spoken is what is written. And what is read is what is written. Sound the same and a bit confusing, right? It is not actually confusing and not the same. Look at, look at this example. We say knowledge. And if you say to somebody who does not know English and who can write ideally phonetically well, they will write N-O-L-E-J, knowledge. If I give them the word knowledge as it's spelled in English, they will pronounce it knowledge again. Which is, which is not really correct. So this is, uh, there are so many situations where English does not make sense in many ways. And it affects our languages. You see, you have fat farm, fat farm. Same sound, but different writing. When you write names like Akim, it actually changes. And sometimes the pronunciation actually is lost. But luckily, a word like Akim is properly conserved and maintained in Arabic. So the pronunciation will not change over ages. But for under indigenous languages that don't have any writing that can conserve them, they change meaning over time and actually could be lost. I like to compare it to driving a square uh, pick into a round hole. When you drive it into a round hole, you will have to distort the hole or you actually destroy the square pick. And what happens? It lose bits of it. And then this is exactly the situation with underdeveloped languages. They force them into writing system, which does not accommodate them fully. And over time, they lose some of their originality and some words are lost. I will give some examples in my country. These words, tonj is the correct word, but it's now wrongly written as on the right side. We have raja, I mean yurul, which is written as yurul. Raja, which they write as raga. And you have Fangak, they write as Fangak. The language spoken in that town actually don't have F in their, in their language. And they, we have a town, it's called Awil nowadays, but actually its original pronunciation was Awil, which is the first word. It then changed to be called Awil, but then they write it as Awil. See? The language has changed, and the meaning actually is also lost. So Nalayan script ensure that one-to-one -one phoneme and later correspondence, one sound, one character, is maintained across all dialects, all languages, so that pronunciation is made easier, so that you don't have a situation where you have J is equal to G, like sometime in technology, it's supposed to be technology, actually in Basa Malay, but they, they write it as technology, should be J, right? So this is the problem that the Nalayan script will resolve. How does it solve this? We create uh, many matipulators, like 50 consonants and, and 28 vowels. So that a language that uses many vowels and many consonants can be accommodated. In South Sudan, we have a language called Baka, which uses about 38 consonants. And we have another language that uses 37 letters. It is even worse if you go to Southern Africa languages, like Kosa. I don't know how many of you know Kosa language. Have you? All right, I can see some hands there. Nelson Mandela is actually from Kosa, Kosa people. Their language has over 65 letters. And how do they do that? They put three, four letters to represent one sound. And that can be really crazy when you write a word that contains many of those letters. And another feature is we accommodate tones. You know, tones are very important in many languages. As, like in Chinese, if you don't have tones, certain words will actually will be confusing. So Nalayan script will have high tone, mid tone, low tone, as well as rising tone and falling tone. So that languages that use two tone, three, four, five, they will be able to use those tones and write their language much clearly and much easily. This is the basis of the creation. 
You know, growing up in a rural area, I had seen a lot of objects. Some of them I have used. And so these were the ones I transformed into letters. So maybe some of you are familiar with these. You can recognize some of them. If you don't know, you can just uh, learn later on. And this is how I created it. I just draw certain animals, certain objects. And sometimes I actually ended up not using any of those because they don't fit the rules that I had developed for joining, for writing. So I went ahead, and then this is what the samples look like. In 2013, I had not yet got an app to type it. So this was my handwritten. And this is the type one, the first time it was uh, put into computer in 2015. And this is the latest in 2016. And now we have it changed a little bit in 2017. So, so far, this is the keyboard which we can use on computers. And we are now translating, translating books so that they can be taught in the new writing system. And we are developing apps for iOS and Windows. I mean, we, have, we already have for Windows, iOS, and Android so that they can be used on a smartphone. Now, the biggest thing that people fear about an alien script is that it will reduce literacy. When you apply to these languages, maybe people will not be able to read it. And one thing is that many of our languages, especially in African region, they are not developed. The literacy rate actually in English and other international languages is low. Take the case of my country. My country literacy rate is only 32%. And this is the percentage of people who can actually read and write English or Arabic. If you go to the indigenous languages, the percentage is so low. Maybe 90 to 100% of the people cannot read and write their indigenous language. Some even do not speak. It's the same situation in Sudan. It's the same situation in Chad, in other African countries. It's just a little variation. Other countries, they can maybe have uh, languages, local language written up to maybe 50%, but not really good. So I think we are not going to destroy literacy. It's instead, we are going to increase it because it will remind people to, to study local languages and to see the importance that they have. Because UNESCO, in its declaration on cultural diversity, is stressed that every section of human society has right for their language to be developed, and government should be encouraged to do so. The other question is, it's very difficult. People will not learn it. And you can be the judges. If you look at this, number one, a learn script and Chinese, which one is simpler? <laughs> probably some could say maybe one is simpler. Compared to Thai, which is number four, probably the same difficulty, or maybe an alien is simpler. And this is Ethiopian writing system. So there's nothing that is really simple. It's just the, the importance, the significance. And if it is important, people will use it. As they say, necessity is the mother of invention. So it has to be made necessary by the people who own the language, and it has to be made necessary by the governments. So that at the end of the day, no language is lost. We have lost languages. And now people are trying to even study the ancient Egyptian language, because they realize there's something important they can know. Because no one can speak it. The first time it was actually deciphered was in 1822 by a Frenchman. You can see, so we don't want to lose language and later on struggle to, to recover them. We should develop them. So many languages are dying. As, like, look at the situation in uh, Sudan and South Sudan, for example. There are more languages in trouble than are developing. There are three languages in trouble, 11 are dying. In South Sudan, 11 are in trouble, six are dying. Many have died, about more than six, they have died in, in the two countries. So we need to reverse this situation by using the script and encourage people to use them. The other point is that when you develop a language, actually people will see the importance to read their language, and it adds to our diversity. Of course, we need to learn international languages. How can I talk to you if I didn't know English? But at the same time, to maintain the diversity of humanity and the richness it adds into our lives, we only need to develop languages because languages are the spokesperson of different cultures. And when we do so, it's like having a salad. A salad is only good when you have a variety of vegetables. Or compare it to a garden of flowers. You have a beautiful flower garden if you have red, yellow, and blue flowers and many other uh, colors. If you have only yellow flowers, your garden is not beautiful. 
So I believe Nalayana script is in going to remind people to love the language, love their culture, develop their music in their languages, and we will enjoy Nigerian music, Jamaican music, and many other music in different languages. It's also going to bring technology close to the people. Some of these people, they have incredible knowledge, like the Dogons in West Africa in the first picture. They have advanced knowledge in astronomy. They knew well before modern scientists that there is Jupiter, which has four moons, and they knew that there was Saturn, which has a ring. They knew many things. Now scientists are surprised. These people knew this information. So we want these people to be able to write the language and help you know, the contribution they can make to humanity. There's, the, the sun people, which uh, these people, they have very complex uh, language. It has so many sounds, like I said before. You can hear, pa, play, pa, so many clicks. And they have about 120 sounds that you can make into letters. How can you have 120 letters in English? I think Nalerian will do that. So with this, I believe we can make a difference and we can make humanity much better and make the world a better place if we accommodate diversity by having every language written and by having every culture maintained through their languages. Thank you.